Well, good day, traders. And with the G20 summit now pretty much in the rear view mirror, we're focused on what's happening in the global economy. Yeah, of course, there's some fragility that people have been focused on. Um, but at the same time, that, that fragility is largely offset by very positive factors. Whether those positive factors continue in earnest for a long period of time, we'll have to yet to see. But at the moment, the idea that we're seeing some economic fragility, but that's being offset by the idea that we're going to see aggressive central bank easing um, not really to fight fires, but to try and support their economic expansions. And that's certainly the case. I mean, if you have a look at the Bloomberg table here, you can see a situation on that far right hand side where you can see the level of market uh, cuts that are being priced into the swaps market over the next 12 months. It's a sea of red. The markets are expecting a very aggressive central bank easing. Bond yields have been moving lower. In fact, today, if you have a look at the market, you can see that the US 10 year Treasury is trading at 1.95%. It's the lowest since 2016. It's down a couple of basis points on the session. You go into Aussie fixed income, you can see you know, yields across the curve down about three to five basis basis points a piece there. So certainly you know, this buy everything mantra is, is very much in play, not just driven by what we're seeing with the idea of aggressive central bank easing. But you know, if you have a look at some of these other respective tables, you can see that um, uh, global money supply continues to push up. It's got a very strong correlation with the MSCI World Index. And as long as money supply continues to filter through, the idea of liquidity making its way into markets is very firm. You've also got a situation where the G3, the big countries out there, um, their central but their balance sheets have been contracting quite sharply. But with the Federal Reserve likely to announce uh, an end of its quantitative tightening program in the months ahead, uh, and potentially even with the ECB restarting its QE program, the idea that central bank balance sheets are not only going to stop, but actually could gradually creep higher again should be good for equities. So liquidity is the dominant thematic at the moment. And this buy everything idea, you know, whether it's rates, whether it's fixed income, whether it's equities, is very much true. I talk about that in the daily fixed uh, email that I send out every day. If you want to have a look at it, have a look at the link and you can sign up in the, in the below uh, disclaimer area. But have a look at some of the setups. Yeah, have a look at the FTSE 100. You can see that breaking out. It looks really, really good on, on pretty much any time frame that you can see. You can see the DAX looking to push up. I mean, our opening calls at the moment for both markets are pretty flat, but both markets look pretty good. You can see the S&P, the, uh, the US 500, trading at all-time highs. It's down about three ticks at the moment, nothing too spectacular. And you've got the Wall Street cash down about 27 points. So it's been a fairly flat trading session. But these markets are near all-time highs or multi-year highs, and that's very, very bullish. We're just waiting for that buy to kick in. You have a look at the ASX 200 today. We're up uh, about 37 points. You know, the, the fact that the energy sector uh, has taken out a few points and that's been offset by gains in materials. It's been offset by REITs. Well, again, you know, it's a proxy of what's happening in the bond market there. But you've seen financials pushing a little bit higher. And again, if you have a look at the ASX 200 on a daily or a weekly time frame or four hour time frame, it looks very, very bullish at the moment. The bulls are firmly in control. You know, I think all in my mind, these markets should either be traded neutrally without any position at all or traded from the long side but it's very difficult to be sure given the price action you've been seeing there as well. The idea of what's happening in the currency markets, you can be long equities and you hedge that exposure by being long the Japanese yen in, in, in a kind of situation of trying to hedge yourself using that, that situation. Um, what we've seen today is the yen has been the outperformer across G10. It's up against every G10 currency, notably uh, against the Nokia and also the Canadian dollar, where we've seen oil prices having one of its biggest one day falls overnight, down 4.7%. The idea that the G20, the, the, the OPEC have come to the party, they've extended their output agreement uh, cuts for another nine months, it's underwhelmed the market. The market was looking for six months, doesn't matter. The market's saying that OPEC are losing share, the rest of non OPEC uh, are picking up the slack, and therefore the OPEC cartel can cut. Uh, and freeze its production numbers, but the rest of the, the supply is going to be picked up elsewhere. And we've got a demand issue now, it seems to be the issue. So, you know, if oil prices continue to go lower, that may be a bit of a negative for the global economy, we'll have to see. But certainly oil prices ticking up a little bit higher today. It's probably having a negative impact on bond yields. And again, you know, that situation has been pretty good for gold. The idea that inflation expectations are falling as a result of lower oil prices, good for gold, good for Bitcoin. And I think, you know, you've seen both of those markets looking pretty strong today. So very interesting trading sessions. I think liquidity is now the number one uh, macro thematic out there.